working away trying to get this crank gear brand new onto this crankshaft and uh, I've been working away on it for, for a while before I decided to do the video but uh, I've been having a heck of a time because there are the previous owner beat the heck out of the end of this crankshaft and raised dimples on the metal and those dimples were causing uh, have been causing the crank crank gear and you can see the lines maybe you can see the lines inside the in, inside there um, to, to have a have a uh, interference you know a lot of interference so I'm trying to get this uh, trying to get this installed I can I also have not been able to remove this uh, this um, uh, wood of key um, so what I'm what I'm doing here is uh, is I'm, I'm just taking and I'm not sitting there filing away on the crankshaft. No, I'm finding just the little nibs and taking those off. And then I'm taking a piece of um, a crocus cloth, which is for, for polishing and, uh, and polishing that up uh, afterwards, trying to get this thing to fit on. Now, the uh, to initially get it to fit on, there were uh, there was some real problems right on this leading edge. And I addressed those with the... Uh, uh, with the file and now I'm getting down to where it will slide on some but I don't want to force it I don't want to force it on force it off and leave marks on here uh, like that so what I um, I remember a long long time ago my dad who was an engineer used to use something called Prussian blue so I went down and I got some Prussian blue um, from from uh, one of the local auto parts stores and uh, and it should, now I haven't used this in a long, long time, so forgive me if I'm being weird or doing it wrong. Um, I'm going to put a little, and I've not used this in a, used this, so, uh, so I'm going to put some around the, the crank here and see if I can get my witness marks to show up. I probably should be using a glove or something. And I'll let that dry. Let's see where it transfers again. Getting it started a little tricky. There we go. I wonder if it's hitting on this now. That's much better. I couldn't get it anywhere near that before. Seems to be transferring right along, right alongside the uh, the uh, right here. Seems to be transferring. I can feel a nib on that.
Prussian blue didn't really seem to work for me. So I'm going over to another uh, technology, the Sharpie. And I've, uh, I've marked this up with Sharpie all the way around. And I've actually worked it so that the, uh, so the gear goes on about this far before it encounters resistance. And I'm going to see if that Sharpie uh, can find, the, uh, find out where the problem is. Okay. Let's turn it. It doesn't seem to be on the on the Woodruff key. I don't see anything there. I see some marks right there. Yeah. Oh, look. There's a. Scratch right through there. There we go. It's just in case that maybe there's something on that leading edge that I'm not catching. That's farther. I'm going to call that good. I'm going to call that good. Okay. Now the goal is to see whether this will align with the... Uh, so all that so that I, I can pull this on and off so that once I get everything lined up, I can get the, the, the crank gear and the cam gear lined up by adding different shims. So I had uh, a couple of different motivations for wanting to get this crank gear to come off easily. Um, the first was uh, I thought maybe I might have to change this shim. Um, this shim uh, sets the alignment of the gear with the cam gear. Now you notice I've got the cam installed. Uh, I'm, I'm cleaning up and finishing up this video much later after I did this. But uh, I've got, uh, you know, th this shim... Um, sets that alignment and i thought well maybe i'll have to uh change this shim i got a i've got there's a four thousandths shim and a six thousandth shim that that i got it at uh, roadster factory that uh, i don't need it it turns out this one's just fine um i did think that i might have to cut it to get it see it won't come off the, over that woodruff key uh, i thought i might have to cut it and just you know put it in place carefully and and, and pop that together to do it that way, you, you know, to hold that shim in place by just by the sheer compression of it. Um, the other reason I wanted this to come on and off is it really was hard getting the old gear off. And uh, I'm thinking the next owner, I didn't want to do that to them. Uh, I didn't want to leave, you know, maybe, you know, 20 years from now, somebody's going to change these gears again. And I didn't want to do that to somebody else. Um, so I don't, I don't think I'll ever drive it enough to, to do that. So this will come off um, easily uh, now with a, uh, with, a, with tapping on it uh, with a brass punch. It'll go back on. Before, I would have had to beat it on like crazy. Here's a brass pu punch. Uh, it'll just uh, tap on now. I think that's a good compromise from where it was. So there we go. I think what caused the problem, I think the problem was caused by, I think the first part of the travel, the problem was caused by the nibs on the crankshaft. And I think that last bit was caused by maybe when the, uh, when I tried to remove and the machine shop tried to remove this woodproof key, I think we rocked it uh, a little bit and brought this end up. And that's why filing the back end of that woodroof key uh, made it possible to move the, uh, move the crank gear one once again. Yes, I appreciate your comments. If I did something stupid here with the Prussian blue or whatever, uh, you know, go ahead and, and make a comment. Let me know uh, what you think about how 
uh, you would have done this uh, differently. It encourages me to spend the time making these videos. If you like and subscribe uh, to the channel, uh, it takes a long time to make them, so uh, th that little encouragement helps. And uh, if you are working on yours, let me know uh, how you solve this challenge. Thanks for watching.